<clears throat> good morning in Canada and good afternoon and good evening around the world. Uh, this is Sunday, 17th October 2021. We are in uh, uh, in a live okay. webinar session for Dr. Mukhinder on a very important topic, OCD, and I am requesting Professor Mukhinder Sharma to start the session because the uh, information are very important. We, we have almost 144 people joined already and many are joining, so we do not want to. Uh, uh, Professor Mukhinder Sharma. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Javed. Good morning, everyone. There is some noise coming. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. I am uh, Professor Bhupinder Sharma, professional member of Ontario Homeopathic Medical Association and moderator of this webinar conducted by OHMA. Uh, I welcome our uh, guest speaker, Dr. Muktinder Singh, uh, MD Home, a renowned teacher and homeopath from India, who is again back on our request for speaking in continuation of his last presentation on the topic of homeopathic perspective of convulsive, obsessive convulsive disorders and sharing with us live cases. I will now request uh, the OHMA president, uh, Madam Saroj Gandhiji, to welcome and introduce Dr. Muktinder Singh Ji, Madam Saroj. Thank you so much, Professor Sharma. It's my pleasure to welcome again and introduce Dr. Mukinder Singh Ji, MD homeopath, a renowned teacher and a speaker from India, who specializes in classical homeopathy, especially dealing with pediatric cases, behavioral problems, autoimmune disorders, and advanced pathologies. He's the director of HomeoCare, a chain of pediatric specialty running clinics all across India, and chairman of the Indian Institute of Homeopathic Physicians, a very prestigious and renowned organization in homeopathy. As I had mentioned earlier to all of you, that it will actually take many hours to read his achievements and credentials, and this webinar is only two hours long. I would now welcome Dr. Mukinder Singh Ji and hand over back to Professor Bhupinder Sharma, who will be moderating the event. Dr. Sharma. Thank you, Soji. Uh, I request the participants uh, to send their questions, greetings through chat box, and I will take them at the end or during the presentation. And please put your phone on mute for avoiding noise interruption during the presentation. Now, this presentation is being recorded. You may please start your presentation, Dr. Mukinder Singh Ji. Thank you. Uh, very good uh, morning to all the Ontario Homeopathic Medical Association members and very good evening to my Indian counterparts. So it's a privilege to be on this platform and a great initiative by Ontario Homeopathic Medical Association, the office bearer, president, uh, Dr. Saroj Gandhi, Dr. Bhupinder Sharma, Dr. Javed. So all are very, very, very supportive and very proactive members. So I'm really impressed by the efforts being put in by them and their uh, all that acceptance and this their struggle to establish homeopathy in the province of Ontario. So uh, as most of you might have attended my last lecture, we had a journey through which I was talking about the uh, presentation was some cases, causes of OCD, signs, symptom, how to diagnose, treatment, prognosis, medication, more cases, so today I'll be taking some cases, homeopathic viewpoints, strategies to decode cases and follow-up observations. Because many a time we take a case, we start the case very promisingly, but we are not able to finish it up. So there are some practical things which I have encountered and which I have realized I should share with you. So in the first part today, Again, I'll be just flashing through the previous slides which we discussed last 
in the last session in the part one so that those who are attending for the first time they become well versed and they are just in tune with what i want to take you along the journey so i hope uh, you would like this and i would be able to convey uh, my uh, maximum uh, whatever i want to convey so starting so as we talked that ocd is a kind of unwanted behavior it, these are some compulsions so how we diagnose the ocd patient around us people who are fussy and fastidious who keep washing their hands who hardly smile who it is really hard to convince and seem perfectionist who keep on repeating same things who check the things again and again so sometimes we uh, so these are the some behavior some obsessions and there are some compulsions followed by obsession so we talked about the cycle of ocd four type of ocd checking contamination symmetry and rumination so these were the so what the patient think that they their habits are just troubling them they are not making sense and then we talked about some criteria to diagnose so these are the these are the slides which we have i'm not repeating the matter just to memorize <clears throat> that these were the slides which went through and then icd 10 guidelines say that obsessional symptoms or compulsive acts or both must be present for most days for at least two successive weeks and they must be the great source of distress or interference with the activities so should individuals thought own thought they should not be implicated thought they should not be any impressions and they are unable to resist their thoughts and it must not be playerable thoughts so these are some requisites to diagnose a case as an ocd case so we knew that cognitive behavior therapy erp exposure response prevention today we will be talking these strategies more and the medication being given is serotonin uptake and hip to sris are the med group of medicine so then we talked about a case where there were the symptoms of ocd and the symptoms were heading with heading towards when we took the ocd symptoms so those symptoms they uh, guided us to a remedy so these were the further slides which i talked about the anxiety being faced by and sometimes the brain lies the facts are not there there are hallucination illusions so so these um, compulsions and obsessions they make the life of the patient hell so we were talking about this so i'm just going through so that you can recall the things then checking repeating uh praying putting things in order so these were the some statistics and dr hanneman has discussed in in the one sided disease from 172 to 184 so these were the uh, strategic also we saw that in this case the washing hand and all these symptoms they were covered by lacan but i chose not to prescribe lacan rather there were some symptoms in favor of lacan were full of horrible imagination snake vermin washing hands fear contamination these symptoms led to lacan but what was not there of lacan was no disposition no inferiority complex no forgetfulness no antagonism with herself because this patient was rather having a superiority complex so i chose not to prescribe uh, lacan rather i prescribed platina which gave me very good results and well, uh, to my surprise platina was there in ocd also so we need not to start with ocd so then we talked about this signs and symptoms and uh, all that we have talked that stretch and in children we have seen that these cases are at rise because the children with autism with adhd and uh, even schizophrenic patients they have so this was something neurobiological and physiological and this uh, neuropsychological aspects of uh, psychological aspects of ocd so some environmental early childhood conflicts so we have talked about all that so and there was then then i took one more point to clarify that there is difference between obsessive compulsive neurosis and obsessive compulsive personality type 
because obsessive compulsive personality type is a different thing than obsessive compulsive neurosis so the disease ocd comes under the neurosis but personality type is um, there are many people who are falling in this out of 12 type personality types obsessive compulsive personality people who are rather many successful people into the life so they are rewarded they are very tyrant they are dominating they are very methodological so they usually enjoy very high position so they are not diseased but their personality type is more or less like obsessive so that makes them a successful person so both this uh, we have expected then we talked about what are the symptoms which can be taken and why case taking what we have to take into the uh, consideration so we then we talked of some common remedies like arsenic kalika prejudices of arsenic kalika nakswamika carcinosin orums these some indications into our materia medica lycopodium like love for power so nitric acid we talked of so i hope you remember all that compulsive disorder rubric some common rubrics which really work or which are mistaken for this fastidious we talked of that sometime we take it uh, for granted that paper but a fastidious of different remedy has different shades then we have some clinical tips then second case i took was uh, natrum self was given and you must be remember then more clinical tips were given coca lysine hyoscyamus medorinum these uh, intercurrent remedies which act as this nozots they act very good so uh, now we are at this stage where we are talking about a third case so this was the case of uh, uh, 24 years male who has ocd from last 6 years he has skin rashes on right side of body eyes redness allergies along with chilly thirsty likes covering can tolerate heat more than cold physical journals are as you know in these cases physical journals are never a deciding factor but still if we because we take a case and we analyze the case so this person has chicken craving rantha craving and milk craving and this perspiration on whole body sleep was normal so past history Uh, symptoms which the patient presented was that he said that he is troubled with ocd problem so he he was aware that this is just my misconception but still i can't help it so everyone in the house knows my ocd problem but i didn't disclose it outside so he says that at my home everyone is aware that i am an ocd patient and i uh, because they see me suffering but outside i have never revealed it to anybody that i am an ocd patient so uh, then everyone in house i have issues with some people so symptoms i if i look upon their face or just imagine them i have feeling of anxiety so he is so whenever he looks at many people he feels anxiety if i touch something once then i have a feeling don't touch it repeatedly so he stops himself from touching it repeatedly same way when he want to some place uh, uh, when i went to some place and due to anxiety i again visit so that same place so he has to visit the same place again and again i have feeling if i don't do this thing the other time then sometime bad will happen so this is why i if i ask that why you do so he said if i don't do to so my obsession is that if i don't go there if i don't do this particular ritual this thing again then there would be some disaster bahut something bad will happen so he says that suicidal thoughts intrude my mind i feel like jumping out of window i used to be angry person always i always been an egoistic person so he is an angry egoistic person childhood was nice my father used to drink a lot and after drinking he usually fight with my mother so i am more attached to my mother not good in studies non diligent so this person was attached more because when fathers are dominating over mothers so most of the time their kids they feel 
uh, very much uh, very much disturbed and they are attached more to their mother so i'm more attached to my mother not good in studies non diligent so i sense those things earlier which are going to take place in future so this is something you tongue was white coated he was talking about career and he had clear voice now clear voice extra sensory perceptions and ocd they have lot of relationship many people who present with ocd they they definitely feel that they have extra sensory perceptions as those who have attended my uh, autism lecture with dr respected dr vk chohan sir they must have realized and i was explaining the same thing that more than five senses there are eight senses which we perceive in the, the severe psychological cases so there are three more senses of proprioceptive sense vestibular sense and interoceptive sense same way the ocd patient they have lot of sensory issues we have talked about that their senses are very much heightened something so some have smell obsession some have touching obsession some have there are different uh, uh, obsessions so these obsessions they many a times ruin the life of person they affect the life of person very negatively so this patient was again bothered by he says that i can see whatever happen is about to happen clear ones is a trait where person has developed a kind of sixth sense although this is a disease because many religious people many spiritual people they develop this sense out of their meditation and out of their hard work and in many spiritual practices is come by default but in if it develops in the patients this clear one sense that really for ocd for confirmation that it is an ocd this is an interrupting and this is a disturbing kind of sense because they hear what people talk about them they see what is about to happen and they are never at ease so i gave more importance to this rubric clear ones and as he said that i if i don't go there i feel that something bad is about to happen and he has strong suicidal instinct so for me these are non uh, ocd symptoms so i prescribed the remedy crotlus cascavilla which is a snake remedy clear voice fear misfortune and suicidal throwing himself out of window but uh, i was i prescribed this remedy and i waited for around 4 to 5 weeks so one dose with placebo tds was given so the follow up was not favorable he said my suffering have is increased after this medication i have stopped all my allopathic medicine before starting this medicine when he came to me he said that uh, i'm i'm very much troubled with my allopathic medication so before even approaching me he had stopped it week before so i never knew that it is due to the stopping of that allopathic medicine that his complaints has increased or after giving crotlus cascavilla so he gave me my first follow up in one two weeks but after a week i called him again so his eyes dryness anger so uh, he wanted always things according to his wish so his anger was increased he was more dominating at home so he then said that i have disturbed my sleep wake cycle so this is something if a psychological person if a a psychiatric patient uh, like uh, schizophrenia ocd mania autism adhd or any patient in general if his sleep wake cycle is disturbed it means that his circadian rhythms have disturbed circadian rhythms are things which are something with based with our vitality which are based with which are very much deeply rooted into our basics of our life or homeostasis all depend upon circadian rhythm so this was sufficient for me to evaluate that my medicine is not working on this
So after waiting for about a month, no change in symptom, patient got even worse. So I reviewed the case. So in cases, in such cases, when we don't get the results, we review the case. So I, uh, he said that I keep talking on phone. So there are certain dreams which are started after medicine. So these are horror dreams like murder, feels better after taking names of DSP, lawyer, friends, whatever he is talking on the phone. So he's talking about the crime all the day. He said that I have contacts with DSP. So, but he is also not very good lawyer, which he has some good contacts with lawyer, but he at the same time start telling about their failure and the manipulation. Share his daily activities with mother. I don't want to keep particular person's image in mind, which I don't like. So he keeps um image, but whenever that person comes in front, his images start coming and he gets disturbed. I don't like certain person in my acquaintances, very much image conscious. Whenever I try to do seva at Gurdwara, I have feeling that my OCD will increase and people around him will notice his problem. He said that I, I don't want to go, I have stopped going to the public places like Gurdwara. He used to go to Gurdwara. Someone told that your problem will be solved, although he has not uh, told it to many people into the society. But some senior family members, they have advised that you go to Gurdwara and your problem will be better. But here he starts feeling that if I go to Gurdwara, the people observe me. I don't, some person to whom I don't like, if he comes there, Gurdwara, I have to uh, take his shoes into my hands when I do the seva. So that will increase my problem because certain person, so in Gurdwara, anyone can come. In, at home, he restricts people coming from his home. There's no relation with this OCD problem. Still, I do the same thing. He said, that's okay. That this is my personal life and OCD. I know that I have to keep them separate. But still, I cannot help myself. I remain restless until I do the things which keep going on in mind. I always think that I have nothing to do. Remains free. And this makes me to think about my future. So whenever he is free, he is thinking negatively about his future. He said that I'm helpless and no one can help me out. So he said that no one can help me. I'm, I, this is my suffering. This is my problem. And I'm sure that this OCD is my, some karma rog and I have to face it. No one is going to help me out. So, but I always have a thought in my mind that would there be a day when I'll feel good because I'm really troubled by this thoughts. And so I have joined gym, but after this medicine, fever came and I never go to gym. So he said that again, uh, after this medicine, the fever came to me and after uh, fever came, my OCD symptom aggravated. So again, the same reason I stopped going to the gym. I don't like go lower grade areas become aggressive if my OCD don't complete anxiety present. So he said that I become whatever, if I'm not able to complete my obsessions, my compulsions, then I really feel bad and I, I have to, uh, I get aggressive. So my anxiety, if I, my task doesn't complete, then I keep on thinking about for three, four hours after I become normal. So whenever there is an interruption, whenever there is some increase in the symptom, he has to, uh, it takes three, four hours for him to settle and become normal. I'm very sympathetic and helpful to others. Cannot see anyone suffering. I want things as per my wish. For that, I even command others become dictatorial. Aversion certain person to injustice cannot tolerate. He said that if there is an injustice happening around me, I cannot, I'll, I'll even fight with the policeman. I'll fight with the authorities. I tell them on their face the things I found wrong. So this time, I didn't consider the OCD symptom. Again, the same thing which I quoted you in the lack end. Although I was a bit evolved in this case because when I took, I took clairvoyance into the um, consideration. I took his personality, fear of misfortune. But still this medicine, I knew that my medicine is not wrong. So I had a even wider picture of the personality. And when I look into the personality, I took these rubrics into the second phase of my case taking. So he said that I cannot take injustice. Uh, 
and uh, uh, sympathy because he is too sympathetic and then aversion to certain person as we have uh, knew that and then dictatorial because this person is very dictatorial so the remedy which came to my reporterization was causticum and as we have talked that kali group has a special affinity for obsessions because they are full of anxiety they are full of compulsions they are full of uh, different uh, kind of thoughts and their thoughts make them aggressive so this person so this kali really suited uh, to me and i prescribed so causticum they are intolerant to injustice so these are the people the in punjabi it's called valley valley means the people who fight for the poor so they they just uh, are kind of uh, uh, anarchist so very dominating and litigious they write letters to the authorities if something wrong goes wrong so many i have uh, i had another case of ocd who was very litigious he always used to poke into everywhere he used to interrupt everything happening around him by his letters sometime anonymous sometime and trust ally um, filing the public interest litigations so he always fights with the authorities but sympathetic to suffering poor so he has two faces one is if there is a stronger force depressing the weaker force so he would stand by the weaker person he might lose his own uh, benefits but he will stand with the poorer one so sometimes even his own he has gone his own against his own uh, authorities to fight for the poor people so this is something very peculiar of causticum so after causticum one and patient reported improvement in his symptoms follow up was taken every two weeks there was steady improvement and patient was more concerned about physical complaint in follow up this point i will be taking in details that what happens when you prescribe a right remedy so when you get that causticum and this kind of steady improvement and whenever the patient start improving from the psychic uh, symptoms his physical symptoms start bothering him more so if a psychiatric patient is coming up because most of the psychiatric patient they are unable to feel the physical pains physical symptoms and they don't know what is bothering them so we'll be talking about a pattern that what what faculty of the mind improves and what what organ of the body it throws the toxins so the same way here this was more than sufficient for me to confirm because in the first follow up after crotalus cascavella my observation was that his sleep wake cycle has disturbed and that was my deciding point that i need to leave this remedy i cannot rely upon this remedy here this was the thing that now he started docs of you see my knees they are cracking so if a patient of causticum given a medicine for ocd whose social life his personal life was like hell and he stopped going anywhere he was not socializing he was very uncomfortable meeting people and now he is not talking about all that and he is complaining you doctor of my knees i suffered them and these my knees are troubling a lot i want to go out but my knees they are really painful so this is something to cheer up this is something for you his pains are blessings because his disease has left his psyche and has gone to the body so this is something very good i hope i am able to convey what i am trying to say so final follow up was better anger controlled ocd better occasionally repeat things dreams are not horrifying so this was long follow up so now let us uh, understand the ocd because i am giving you another aspect now till now in lacaninum case i have told you that no ocd symptoms but the disposition and temperament of patient is important then in the second case i took this symptoms of clairvoyance 
which really is can be an OCD symptom, cannot be an OCD symptom. Fear, misfortune can be an OCD symptom, cannot be an OCD symptom. But that didn't help me. Now, then finally, I took the symptoms like injustice cannot tolerate aversion to certain persons and all that, and it helped the patient. Now, what is important, because next phase of my presentation, I'm, uh, someone who has not understood the concept might take it that I'm giving some contradictory statement. So I'm again drawing your attention, kind attention, to be with me so that you understand what I'm trying to tell you. It is not just mental symptoms which lead to right remedy. Whatever we have formed a habit that we get the mental symptoms of the patient, we prescribe, we depertize it and prescribe the remedy. No, but disposition, temperament, original and altered state of mind and body. So this I would be demonstrating in my next uh, case. So another thing is that as I have told that he wants to do certain things, uh, he stops himself as in last case you have heard that he wants that uh, he, I, if I do this, this will happen to me. And he wants to, he tries to control his anxiety and his anxiety increases. Now, this is something very common symptom of OCD. But in homeopathy, we have a rubric, will contradiction of, which, which many times, because what is will? I'll be talking about because will and OCD, they have lot more something to understand. So what is my will? So it was my will that I uh, accepted the invitation given by OHMA to present a case. I worked very hard with my strong will. I gathered all my cases from my practice. I compiled all that matter. So it was with my willpower that I am able to. Uh, today, when I'm sitting in front of you, I'm discussing you, it is with my willpower. When someone has weak will, he cannot do anything, whatever he wants to do. So this is something weak will and strong will. But many a times, the people, they fight with their will. They want to do one thing. They want not to do something. So I will be demonstrating it with a case. So what is contradiction of will? That I want certain things, but say uh, in the non-pathological physiological form that I want to wake up early morning and do my religious practice, but I'm not able to do it because, uh, because of last night I slept later. So I have my arguments with myself. So I just don't get up and then later in the day i repent that why i didn't get up i was why i didn't went to the morning walk and why i was not able to do certain things so this kind of fight goes on between all of us but sometimes this fight becomes very very prominent so the what is will contradiction is the will of the individual is inconsistent or incongruous with itself so when you are not consistent with yourself, whatever you are thinking, you are not able to do. In this case, the patient is doing or seeing things which are in contravention of what he have appears to wish. So whatever he wishes is just contradiction. So there is another rubric called hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is whatever I just had another case uh, because I have not yet got the result, but I prescribed a remedy. Uh, the recently, I got a girl so who has... So he said that he cannot fight injustice. He cannot, he uh, wants, he, he doesn't want to be controlled. This was her main symptom that I don't want no one to control me. But in the history, there was a trait that he was a dominating person. So I asked her a question that you say that you don't want to be controlled, but you are controlling everyone. He said this. So she laughed at this. And he exactly, doctor, this is my problem. All say to me that you don't do what you say and what you, you don't say what you do. So this is hypocrisy that she is preaching others to be good, but she is not good. She is preaching, she is objecting others to control her, but she herself is controlling her. Here it is opposite. They say that they were there, wish they want to do certain things, but they are unable to do certain things. I hope you will. So this has been in our literature. This thing has been listed as antagonism with herself. What we antagonize is what I say, I just do or what I think just opposite. 
feel as if he has to similar to the above except that this case the patient actually feels the pull of two opposite sets of violations and thus finds it extremely difficult to act at all so this is a form of irresolution that my two wills make me unable to do anything the combined repertory rubric confusion identity duality sense of so there is a under the confusion of identity there is a rubric the sense of duality that why my one mind is saying to do my other mind is saying not to do so will loss of and will weakness of as i told rubric including in synthetic repertory uh, and they say that no need to do certain things so what happens is in this fight of will person stops doing everything so sit inclination prostration of mind lassitude alert so this is a discussion we are doing that this rubric is a classical representation of an ocd trait so we have 21 remedies in this so i would be demonstrating a detailed study of uh, one remedy anacardium and few symptoms of other remedies two three remedies because i i am already i have uh, taken around 40 minutes and i have just passed only 15 slides out of my hand, more than 150 slides so uh, i would be uh, demonstrating the anacardium that how you understand the rubric from repertory so anacardium oriental when we um, dip into the literature the ocean of homeopathic materia medica because as we know that homeopathic materia medica is a very very voluminous thing and to take a holy dip into the uh, materia medica and take out something useful is something like a luck because someone uh, diving into the ocean and taking out gem in first try this is something very rare so same way anacardium i try to explore this will contradiction so allen key note says that feels as though he had two wills because we always have one will but sometimes the patient start feeling two wills one commanding him to do what the other forbids so one will is saying do this other is saying don't do this kehte mera dil kuch aur kehta hai dimag kuch aur hota hai my mind and my heart they are in fight with itself two wills one contradicting the other are present so dave practical materia medica so a case to understand more so i had this case of uh, granthi singh ji from gurudwara uh, because this is a very sensitive issue so i'll not uh, tell the, even the age and the person but to, to get the gist of the case you should understand so it is a religious priest in gurudwara who suffered ocd with loss of control over bladder this was his main complaint that he has ocd and he cannot control his urine he has obsession of intrusive thoughts which he tries to resist by will so he said that i have many thoughts which i try to control as if tobacco is prohibited in gurudwara in uh, actually in sikhism it is said that uh, when uh, you take tobacco or cut your hair or there are four prohibitions in sikhism so he he said that i i know i i have been prohibiting people from using tobacco around gurudwara but he said that he get thoughts of smoking cigarette he said i feel i i punish myself for this is tormented by his own thoughts and is fighting his own will day and night so this is that in my ocd i this he was not actually a diagnosed case of ocd he came to me with this problem of that i spoil my clothes whenever i sit for doing part or my urine escapes so he thinks he would lose control over bladder and pass urine while doing rituals and despite all his efforts he end up wetting his undergarments then he has to get up and bath again and start ritual then again the same thing happens he said that i control myself otherwise i have a very good bladder control but whenever i get this thought i get urine very frequently i cannot even sit for 10 minutes whenever because what i have been taught is while doing part you should have the sucha sarir that untouched body total washed body washed clothes even 
no you should not even go to the toilet when you are sitting uh, in the sanctorum so he said that what happens is i start japji sahib part and japji sahib part take maximum 15 minutes but i cannot resist myself otherwise when he is not doing part he will never get this uncontrolled urine he has been trained in a religious place where the rituals are performed very meticulously he said that i was sent to a uh, uh, ashram where there is very strict rules for even they said that even today they they clean the utensils with the sand so we have to rub the utensil for minimum 10 minutes and then uh, don't wash it rather dry it with the ash and sand and then we have to just clean it with our hands and even don't use water so even because water uh, the the hard pump has a leather in it so we cannot so it was a very strict very meticulous following of the rules he had been punished many time for not following rituals properly when i was in that ashram dera so i was punished many time they are very strict so whenever they say that you are not doing the rituals properly you are not sitting properly your back is not erect and you are not doing this. so they used to punish so he had been punished many time for not following ritual properly he always had a question in mind that how these physical rituals are important as spirituality is not about physical body so he said doctor sir i feel that this is about bhagwan to aapke man mein hai but i have been into this so i many a times get these questions how this is ocd develop was that once he was punished very hard and he tried to escape from place he was living for training it when i was around 14 so once i was matlab uh, when i was sleeping and some other boy saw that i had an erection so due to that erection i was punished very badly even my testicles were bitten so he said that i had a very bad feeling so i decided to leave that place so when i were i was leaving that place i just went 2 kilometers and came back no i am running away i cannot escape then he returned back by himself and he was not sure that he is doing right or wrong by escaping and after that incident his ocd symptoms started he started washing and he has compulsive thought and these thoughts and this control over bladder was lost <laughs> so observation while i was taking that case was that person seemed lost and was not taking and taking he was taking lots of time to reply any question asked so it was long case taking because it took me hours to communicate whenever supposing i asked make a uh, we or tell me more so he would be silent for at least 90 seconds 2 minutes 120 seconds and when i asked he just will say uh, wait, wait wait i'm answering so he will take simple yes and after 2 minutes of silence he will say okay ha ji so this was only answer ha ji but it took around so there this was a non ocd symptom because ocd patient sometimes are very hurried so this uh, rubric i took was answer reflex from i don't know how many of you are using this rubric so here in this case the will contradiction has been at root of development of ocd now here i am taking this rubric as will contradiction which is almost a common symptom of ocd but for me this ailments came when he was punished and he ran away and came back from there he has developed this will contradiction from there he has developed this uh, uh, trait of uh, uh, fighting with himself and loss of control so this was my reason of taking this case so this seems that contradictory that earlier i have told that i will not take any ocd symptom as the repertorization by here i have chosen anacardium because he reflects long and he has will contradiction and that was right from ailment from because when he went away and came back that was the only incidents from here all his problems i started so uh, we have anacardium in the ailment from punishment also so i prescribed anacardium 1m so let us go through the anacardium now so anacardium has strong will contradiction so uh, this uh, uh, ln jh in chronic miasm says great irritability desire to curse and swear great contradiction 
between understanding and will. Now, this is these are the two terms which we'll be talking, which Dr. Kent has spoken that will and understanding. A very table, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So if you go, what is this Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde? So this, this was something uh, uh, written by one of the author and this is now a kind of writing style in literature that yes, she has two wills, one hindering her from doing that, which the other impel her to do. So if you search it, Dr. I don't know how many of have, you have read this Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It is a kind of fiction work, which is a classical uh, representation of anacardium. The person has two kind of personalities. He has a kind of split personality at one time and he is contradicting what he is saying. So this is Dr. Alan J.H. has written about an academia. So feels, though he had two wills, one commanding to do, but other forbids. So he always is in a dilemma that my one, one mind is saying this to do and other mind is saying not to do. So this is in Douglas Pearls of Homeopathy. So uh, this hearing guidance him says, symptom says that contradiction between reason and will. Feels as though he had two wills, one commanding to do what the other forbids, in one ear a devil and in other an angel. Prompts him to do murder or acts of benevolence. So on one way, this uh, his mind is saying that do wife. And you get this symptom very prominently that the wives, the good, they had a love marriage. A couple came to me, she, they had love marriage. And after love marriage, he, she was maltreated by the in-laws because of intercaste. She was not given the due respect and the due privileges as a daughter-in-law. And now that girl, which was very obedient at her parents' home, has become a kind of devilish kind of girl. She, she torments the uh, in-laws and even husband. Sometimes she deliberately make it a point that he, she does the things which trouble her husband and which torment her husband. Even when he's sleeping deep, she will ask that, uh, go and uh, bring new shoes to me. And she'll ask that, okay, do there's a sale, do the online shopping. Or she, the, the husband will say, okay, take my credit card and she will do the lavish shopping in the morning. He, he deliberately, he knew that it is in the morning he has to pay the bill or he has to pay the EMI, but she will empty her account. So that kind of thing, she devilish things she do, she deliberately does that things. So, uh, so I, I'll quote, further quote a case to understand this trait. So this was not an OCD case, but I understood uh, anacardium in very great depth from this case. That uh, once a girl, young girl was brought to me. She was working in a telecommunication company. She was a beautiful girl around 20s, in her early 20s. And uh, she uh, was just uh, engaged. She took a week off for the engagement ceremony. He got an NRI fiancé. And when she went return her home, so whatever happened actually was there was a boy, a Bihari boy. She used to fight a lot with that boy. He used to sit next to her cabin and they were almost facing each other while working eight hours in the office. So it was a call center of setup, so troubleshooting. And then uh, she all never had a good terms with that Bihari boy. <clears throat> but what happened that she took a week off and when she returned from her uh, engagement uh, uh, vacation, so when she sat on the seat and she was unable to find that guy in front seat and she suddenly got an anxiety and she interpreted this anxiety, her colleague told that he was missing you and she interpreted it as that as if she has fallen in love with that guy. So at that time she used to, she was very much strange that I have a very, um, my dream fiancé who is from my family, my family has arranged our uh, companionship and they were engaged now 
and she was very happy but suddenly this emotion of not finding that bihari guy to whom she never liked and this anxiety she interpreted that oh who oh, i have fallen in love that guy and that started her troubles and she started getting lot of physical troubles she got paralyzed she got gulenberry syndrome over her and then with that with her fight of emotion so the i prescribed anacardium there and it worked wonders so this anacardium something is something where you have one will right brain and left brain having strong fight with each other it is not just the confusion it is strong fight with emotions so that way do you understand that will contradiction of uh, anacardium so dr shankaran in inside has said antagonism against herself constant feeling of i versus myself so when you are fighting with yourself i versus myself that is a classical case so i have many anacardium cases so if some day time permit we'll be talking about that also so combination of these two means i'm now i'm talking about will and interact and this is what dr kent has written into the kent's lecture on philosophy this combination of these two will and intellect the will and the understanding constitute man conjoint they make life and activity they manufacture the body and cause all the things of the body with the will and understanding operating in order we have a healthy man so if these two grand parts of man the will and the understanding be separated it means insanity disorder and death so this is leads to another symptom which is that fear of losing his reason we have in our repertory the rubric fear of losing the reason so person start feeling that i would lose my reason and this create a kind of a conflict between his will and intellect cpia if you uh, understand in enhancing cyclopedia he pays another remedy of will contradiction he thinks of things which he does not wish to think or uses expression which he knows are incorrect undertake those things which are opposed to his intention and find such contradiction with himself that is puts him in a very uncomfortable and uneasy mood so this is a classical interpretation of an ocd patient's mind so allen encyclopedia and cpia so cpia can be a great remedy i have seen cpia working wonders in ocd cases as i uh, uh, perhaps i mentioned a case of a girl who was raped at early age by her uncle and then she developed ocd and she had that coldness of her sexual hormones and everything and cpia helped her a lot so cpia has ailment from domination ailment from being punished in run from being sexually assaulted and this is what they undertake the things against her intention so when you take start undertaking the things against your intention cpia becomes a great remedy in cocculus it is not about a intention it is your weakness not to act so they see the reality but they cannot act so phosphorus is another remedy which uh, which sometimes acts against the intention because he is selfish but still he will show sympathy because he wants sympathy another remedy kalika which we have already talked last time always in antagonism with herself she knows not what she wants and feels exceedingly unhappy this is what hanuman has written in chronic disease so kalika patient in ocd will present with altered behavior alternating mood at one time good and quite at other excited and angry at trifles constantly in antagonism with herself frequently hopeful frequently despondent frets about everything peevish impatient contented and nothing melancholia so herring's guiding symptom says this about kalika other remedy which has such traits is aloes aloes has this will contradiction <laughs> and strong exhibition of his will because aloes gives up his own will so aloes is known when you give up your own will strong exhibition of will he quarrels with everyone who contradicts him it seems as if he would permit himself to be torn in pieces sooner than he gives up his will it is different from uh, repentance from anger he is a, he is uh, obstinate on a point and suddenly he leaves that point 
it is not about that uh, crocus sativa oleander mesarium sulfur which are anger with quick repentance or lysen which has anger with quick repentance he is arguing very strongly for a point he is arguing for half an hour and suddenly he leaves his point this is what allows is so he just loses control over as we know allows he has no control over his anus so he feels that he will pass everything so that that is a gate allen's encyclopedia exhibits this will contradiction of allows very strongly uh, uh dr sharma just i'm taking just a time to uh, whether i'm clear and uh, uh, i'm able to con uh, communicate with all no, that's fine that's fine go on please thank you thank you you're very you. clear yeah thank you okay. so some more perspective about ocd uh i can't hear you yeah you're not able to hear you dr mukinder your video is frozen and you you we lost you i think he has a difficulties in uh, his uh, connectivity right. so we wait for he join back can you send me a message what's up or mrs rohit gandhi is sending the message yeah i have sent yeah or may you may call her no no you please you carry on with your uh, webinar yes fine 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 just i i don't know what happened uh, something oh, undetectable i was not able to make out of what what happened it suddenly crashed not a problem technical things happen yeah yeah yes <laughs> okay. just few seconds mm
chakra this root chakra so these uh, uh, these are some knowledge is these are color related energy pattern so there are different of all different symptoms of all the chakras because all are hormonal balance all are mental balance all are physical balance homeostasis mind body and soul they are bind up and they are just managed by this energy flow into our chakras and these yogi people who do aggressive meditations and who do uh, prolonged meditations they just balance the chakras so there are different techniques of balancing the chakras so if you are well versed with this technique it chakras i have seen in my practice homeopathy can help you to balance your chakras homeopathy can help you to diagnose your patient for the chakras and we have different remedies which have excellent effect on different chakras so this is again a different topic we can uh, take it in some other way another is these five elements theory as you know dr uh, vijaykar sir they have given he has given us a, a theory of five elements in solving the acutes so in acute c says that space is represented by activity because there are five spaces akash prithvi jal agni and vayu so akash means space element all the activity of mind and body is uh considered under the akash air is mind and fire is thermals that we get heat or cold chilly or hot it's out about fire element water element is about thirst how much water you need or how much water you intake or how much water is processed into your system and earth is desire aversion and our body shape and body type so all these things collectively as they uh, said that activity thermal thirst exists helps us to solve the acute intercurrent uh, uh, the episodes which a person gets the same way these five elements they have given me a lot of understanding into the general understanding of patient so at uh, the psychiatric disorders like uh, this uh, schizophrenia ocd and uh, these kind of other uh, which are not explainable into directly into our the scientific uh, era Uh, or the scientific explanations so you can have a better understanding so this again is a topic of big discussion another is this five evils kaam krodh lobh mohankar because as we know that this sexual energy as i have uh, very uh, in short talked about this sexual energy being raped being sexually assaulted having excessive sexual uh, indulgences that can be the cause of ocd so this sexual energy either too much controlled or too much exhausted or that perverted all the three can form a great form of ocd so this are perverted sex like masochism this uh, sexual identity crisis is like uh, gay like uh, lesbianism all these they can be the great uh, uh, the causes and they ocd patients they you can find more ocd patients in more these perverted sexually perverted people are many a times schizophrenic or ocd people same way anger as we have talked in costigam case as they they that their anger this imbalance of anger anger energy excessive anger suppressed we know that stephsigeria chamomilla this, this uh, sex suppressed is conium so all these are beautiful uh, ocd remedies i am sorry i am being precise in many things but this is i just want to finish up it today and then greed avarice we know that avarice and ocd has lot of things in common they preserve the things they keep the things to them so they are very much sometimes they have very much possessive about money ocd patients and more attachments death of someone a uh, loss of as we have seen ignatia is a great remedy of ocd so is hysterical same way ego as in palatina case we have seen that she was contemptuous so anyone coming from the village side she will never accept it into his life nitric acid so all these imbalances of these five evils because we have lots and lots of mention into our scriptures in indian scriptures even the five vices are uh, being mentioned into that uh, 
uh, Bible even. So all this Sikh, Hindu, all these even Muslims, uh, theories, they talk a lot about these lusts and all these things. So I am not going into the detail, but their imbalance, their excess, their suppression or their perversion, that can be a great tool to solve the OCD patient. This again is a big topic to talk about. Then music therapies, we all know that because mind is never at rest and music is known to uh, ease the mind and soul. So OCD and music therapies are in great talk. If you uh, explore internet about the music therapies and OCD, so there is lots and lot of matter. This again itself in itself is a big topic. So I'm not again touching this. And now we'll be talking about psychotherapy and Cognitive behavior therapy in OCD. So because you, if you are getting patients, you need to counsel them. You need to talk to them. So in my next part, I have left with around 40 minutes. So I'll be rushing through some of the suggestions which you can give to your patient. And then uh, I'll be talking about homeopathic perspective. So how to do counseling? So cognitive behavior therapy and ERP exposure response therapy. So they can be of great help. Okay. Is approach adopted by a psychiatrist. So these are, what is the purpose of this? That first of all, you have to convince your patient that OCD is treatable. So this is how they, they say, you say the patient feel when you come to he's in a clouds, his life is very tough. So they, you have to make a bridge. You have to be a bridge between his, uh, his life to, and is disease to health. So medication, books out to help. So resources on uh, uh, that. First of all, you have to make a patient that it is not only you are suffering. Sometimes patient get this disturbed that why me? Why only me? So if you say that not only you, there are many people. There are around 2 lakh people only in America who are suffering. In India, there is no data available because in rural life, you hardly get any data of psychiatric patient. So millions of people, 1 in 40 person in, out in the world is suffering from severe OCD. So you have to tell them. So you have to motivate them to uh, the some join some group or some discussion group or some peer group like that. Then some factor affecting OCD patients. Number one is sleep. As I told you in a crotless cascaval patient, that when I realized that his sleep wake cycle is disturbed, I was sure my remedy is wrong. So when their sleep is disturbed, that will worsen their symptoms. So lack of sleep can make pure obsession worse telling the sufferer that they might have something else wrong with them apart from OCD. So if they say a sleep disorder, if there is a sleep disorder, you cannot cure an OCD. That would be the biggest obstacle to the cure. So it can also make obsession seem a lot more real. So these hallucinations, these kind of uh, illusions, they become even worse when the person has not slept well. Then you have to motivate patients to avoid that addictive stuff because many a time patient is not able to share and family is not very supportive. So they are cursed or they are blamed for not being the, not try to get okay, but they know they are suffering. So they indulge themselves in alcohol or smoking or these kind of artificial medication. And they are already given that kind of drugs to uh, sedate or to tranquilize their mind or to alter the state of mind. So that is, becomes a vicious cycle, but it worsens their OCD. Then what you need to advise to the patient is don't blame yourself because many OCD patient and guilt feeling are very common. So OCD, you have to tell that patient that it is not your fault. So you have a day when you three amazing things that fight the OCD. So you motivate them today, you have to do three basic things. So don't bother about 93 OCD driven thing you have to do. So just concentrate only, give them small, small tasks. Say if you have 100 bad things, just tell them to concentrate do because once you are able to convince them to do certain thing, so they, as they have OCD, so they, they'll cling to that thing religiously. So that uh, makes, uh, so and then make them the to celebrate their victories. So today, supposing you were washing hands 100 times a day, so today, if you have washed it 90 times, so you have achieved the 10 uh, minus 10. 
So that is your plus 50. So that way you can motivate your patients that you are fighting and we are with you. Motivate your patients, keep a record of all your OCD achievements, however small, so that whenever you have bad day, you can read it and see, just see how far you have come. So it is so easy to forget all the things when we manage to achieve. So write down all your achievements. This is another suggestion. And then people, they used to say, I'm wrong here. I'm doing this thing again. So you have to make this assertion to them that no one is perfect. Remember, no one is perfect. We are human at the end of the day and the thoughts we have only make us human. So you cannot control everything that goes on in very complex organ. That is the mind. Never be frightened for asking for help. So many a times, the many people suffer and they develop the suicidal tendencies because they are suffering in loneliness. They're not sharing much. So motivating them to share. So uh, motivating them to share their problems. So this form is a great place to ask for your help. There is always someone help willing to help. So there are now cyber... Uh, uh, help groups and these uh, many WhatsApp groups and many people of the same suffering, they motivate each other. They, they tell their problem and by that the person gets uh, motivated. Then is laughter therapy. You know, this person is a great star. He is a patient of OCD. He has confessed it in many ways. So there are, you can talk about that celebrities having OCD. Still, they are successful. So life don't end with OCD. So laughter is an excellent therapy. Don't be afraid to laugh at your OCD and to let others laugh with you, but not at you. So laughing on the OCD, not at you. So laughing at themselves is a great uh, depressor. It's a demotivating thing. Share feelings, as I have already talked, that you if you ask the family to be very supportive. So they you can motivate them to share feelings. Listen music is another advice you can give. And you can advise them to learn performing arts because performing arts take their mind into learning new things. Usually people are not ready to learn new things. So that might divert their mind from the suffering and that can help them to achieve uh, the sense of success. So another thing which you have to uh, motivate and tell your patients is don't resist, but justify. If you do have to compulsion, that is wash your hand, try to think that at least I am safe from the typhoid. Because those who frequently wash hands, they don't get typhoid. So you are more hygienic and more neat and clean. So that way, uh, this uh, corona period, uh, COVID period has really made many new OCD patients and they have erupted out. So sometimes it is just a psychological and physiological kind of phenomena. By just doing a positive assertion and the positive counseling, you can pull them out of the milder OCDs. After all, rationally, you know once is enough to get clean. So extra goals are just to satisfy OCD. So that way, rather than how many times do I need to wash my hands to get all the germs off, it becomes a question of how many times the minimum my OCD will put up with. So this is what they evaluate their OCD follow-ups with that. So for washing hands, sometimes they use kind of very chemical based cleanses. Uh, so they ask them not to use because they antidote your remedy and they harm their skin and even skin cancer can happen. So you have to ask them to use the natural uh, cleansers rather than using the chemical cleansers. So never forget that OCD is not you and you are not the OCD. So this is another assertion you need to tell them that it is not the OCD. You are not the OCD or neither OCD is you. You are different and OCD is different. As you wear clothes, so is the OCD. Work on building up your confidence and self-esteem. Ask the patient. Both tend to be low with OCD and as a result, we lack the confidence to trust our own judgment. So unable to dismiss the doubts that OCD causes. So this is another assertion you have to make for how to build up their confidence and you need the family help, train the attendants that how to, rather than criticizing them, rather than uh, cursing them or rather than fighting with them due to their OCD. Because if there's an OCD patient in the family, there's a lot of fighting and arguments between the those who don't understand it and those who are suffering. 
so you have can convincing the family members to be more supportive you can motivate persons for the mild exercise and counting obsessions that you do this while you are counting rather than sitting and counting do push ups or do the uh, kind of squats and all that so that will help their serotonin levels to that now another aspect dr hanneman had some special views because these this is a big question and is a matter of great discussion that do occupational therapies and these kind of cognitive behavior therapies they cure the patients answer is no they don't cure the patient they just are the supportive techniques and dr hanneman has very elaboratively mentioned in it literature See that psychosomatic diseases are better by psychological support, while diseases based on organic pathology are worst by psychological support. Many OCD patient you try to do counseling and they become even worse. Or counseling has no effect. Rather, patient sta stops coming to you if you are doing counseling. So this is what Dr. Hanneman has a warning signs. So effectiveness of counseling in severe OCD cases. That's why those with chronic miasm become worse. under the therapy so when you are trying to do the therapy many people who are under therapy they become worse during the therapy the reason is so soul of the patient wishes to respond positively and acts directly on the body but the deranged physical organ is more reacts against the psyche using the mental and emotional organ even greater suffering so they end up even worse suffering sometime when you say you are not doing you are not trying to do so that guilt even further deepens and the person even worsens within the ocd such patient need to undergo homeopathic treatment in conjunction with psychological counseling because what happens is we homeopathy has a very glorious history in handling the psychiatric cases i once presented in ihp you can see that presentation on ihp website where i have talked about the mental illnesses and there was a glorious period in us when there was 1000 bedded hospital of psychiatric patient because dr hanneman was of a view that giving this strong sedative and punishment kind of things to the because ocd because if you go into the detail the ocd patients are given very harsh therapies very harsh physical punishments even so dr hanneman said that you cannot treat someone by punishing them because they they never give you the fruit they never cure the disease so hanneman advocated that we should have some indoor setups but that is not practically there so what we can do is once the remedies begin to act therapies that were not effective begin to produce fruit so homeopathy has an edge that if you prescribe the right remedy the therapies which were not at all effective they start getting fruitful to so mental illness caused by miasms now you have to understand this patients that are aggravated by psychological treatment and group therapy have an organic component to their mental illness because this dr hanneman says that syphilitic miasm psychotic miasm soric miasm so originally based mental illness often has its origin in sora psychosis syphilis and other miasm mixed miasm tubercular miasm so that again miasm talking about miasm is again a very voluminous thing so in such cases proper anti miasm treatment must be combined with psychological care and stress reduction so anti miasmatic treatment has to be given now that how to prescribe that is again it's going to be lengthy it's already one and a half hour i'll be talking so i'm not dipping detail into but see the syphilis syphilitic symptoms we have to see that suicidal tendencies self harming behaviors or just not you know opening up and not being ready to cooperate and having no symptoms not complaining not share these are something very syphilitic but psychotic are that that mask up of the things uh, manipulating the things as in that case we saw that he was telling a family knew but he was not able uh, telling it to outside he was image conscious so this is a psychotic trait same way sorik uh, as we have seen that in covid times 
few people they have started getting that OCD and due to that washing unhygiene or fear of contamination. So they might be only psoric patient, which I mentioned that only counseling can help. So that way, if you have the fair knowledge of miasms, understanding of miasm, you can help the patient and evaluate for the prognosis and you can have a strategy that how to handle those patients. The constitutions prone to mental disorder need constitutional treatment to root out the internal predisposition and chronic miasms. So this is something which uh, need a deeper understanding of organ and, and chronic diseases. Hahnemann taught that use of psychology was necessary in conjunction with anti-miasmatic remedies to cure mental illness based on miasm, aphorism 228. So you can have further readings I know I'm rushing through. So Dr. Henneman, psychology called psychology as diet for the soul. So mental and emotional disease that arise from somatic disease can only be cured by homeopathic medicine that is directed against the internal miasm. So when you recognize that the certain miasm, certain predisposition, certain family history, certain things they are causing the sickness, you can just... Uh, focus and make a strategy to blunt down the severest or the most virulent miasm first. So in conjunction with carefully adapted living habits, also as we have talked about some suggestion to the patients, it is also important that the patient's physician and relation observe a psychically fitting approach toward the patient as an assisting diet for the soul. So the pay, motivating the patient for the positive thing, motivate the patient for the uh, uh, for a push or for their uh, uh, pulling them out of that discouragement. They need some uh, religious or some uh, good positive things. But to the religious OCD patient, you need to talk vice versa. You have to develop their interest in business and all that. So Hahnemann's strategy, the patient should be treated as if they are sane. Now, what happens is allopathy takes insane or because OCD is one form of insanity only. So you treat the patient as if they are not normal. So Dr. Hahnemann has a warning sign, has a sign that you should not be prejudiced that this is a mental patient. So I have to treat him accordingly. No, take the sanity of the patient, take the positive side of the patient, the good qualities of the patient and responsible person because treating them as if they are crazy aggravates the problem. So if you are taking them crazy, this is true for the autistic and the ADHD kids also. So uh, you can, uh, we can discuss it in detail that to the OCD patient or to the, if you see, if you have read a book that seven highly effective people, seven habits of highly effective people, Dr. Uh, author Stephen Covey has mentioned that he had that uh, a challenged son. And the first thing he did was that he stopped giving him the special treatment. So this special privileges many a time make the patient worst and rather dependent upon the person who supports them. So Hahnemann strategy in 229, Dr. Hahnemann says the physician and attendants must always appear as if they credit such patient with reason. So don't think Ito Pagala, you are you are a fool, you cannot be treated. So at the same time, the patient's environment must be kept clear of all disturbing influence that may help to keep the disease obstacle to cure. I remember one of my OCD patients, the, the, the uh, mother was attached to a pet. And the pet was the problem of OCD because he said he person felt that it is causing contamination, is roaming inside all the bats, he has come into my room, and that would trigger the obsessions and compulsions. But that uh, then I strongly advised the mother to keep the pet away or uh, keep his room aloof or either shift him to the outer dog house. And by removing that maintaining cause, the medicine started responding to that person. So this is what Dr. Hahnemann is mentioning. So that environment must be clear of all disturbing influences. During the course of cure, the homeopath may have to use an acute intercrant to calm the patient in a crisis. So, so many a times a patient is doing well and suddenly there is an acute. 
so that acute might you might leave the constitutional remedy here because dr henneman has given five strategies number one is the the more best selected remedy deep constitutional remedy second option is acute intercurrent then we sometimes has to give chronic intercurrent remedy sometimes you have to give anti miasmatic treatment and sometimes you have to give that uh, uh, present symptom importance and sometimes concomitant or some at the last is about the nosodes so dr henneman himself has mentioned many strategies so one of the strategies that in acute sometimes we stick to our old prescription no you can deviate in such psychiatric cases you can deviate from your constitutional medicine and give an acute maybe it is a psychology like marxol or estramonium or belladonna or dilkamara the acute psychiatric remedies you can give and then return back to the treatment based on the constitution the chronic miasm and the chronic disease can start so this is what dr henneman has mentioned in this way the homeopath carefully follows their patients through the forward and retrograde movement of the healing process during the months and years it takes to cure sora the patient needs ample psychological support to bluster the spirit and strengthen the heart especially at difficult moments so he said that many a time this is a long journey sometimes so don't give the very false hope to the patient okay you'll be okay in 6 months or you'll be okay within a year no you say you clearly tell your patients that it is a journey and we'll be following it together time you can sometime we we do the marketing skills and you just make false promises and at the end say you have said that you will give result in 6 months and at the end of 6 months patient gets disappointed and he just shatters his faith on homeopathy itself so we need to be very wise in making the false promises we should not make any promises which we cannot deliver so you should say i remember once i was sitting with one of the allopath so a lady with that uh, uh, rheumatoid arthritis came so she said uh, doctor sir would i be ever be all right he clearly said no he to kadhi nahi theek hona he will never be all right and we just give and you have to come to me every month so pay the fees get a fresh prescription but you will never be cured so this is and oh she the lady said okay ji okay so but we only but sometimes we we make false promises okay we'll cure you of this we'll cure you of that you should clearly say to the patient that it is a journey we'll try to make it easier and you can be cured yes you can be cured but making this kind of promises sometimes just shatters the faith of the patient so hanuman strategy those who are potentially dangerous to self and other must be treated in an institution but it is difficult to find establishment free from outdated freudian concepts combined with suppressive allopathic drug treatment so model of treatment used by orthodox psychiatry is hopelessly mechanistic this is what dr hanuman told and stands true even today that the, the no, psychiatric orthodox psychiatry is of no use to the patient but sometimes you have to take resort but you need to be very mature to handle such cases now uh, i'm coming to the conclusion of the my presentation but how we can learn the follow up how can we see the follow up and just learn that how to understand something hidden into it so this was a 16 year old child male person came on in 2019 chief complaint was uh, depression ocd allergic rhinitis ocd since 2 years washing his hands again and again praying again and again praying in front of non living things so he is was an amritari child never used to pray in front of non living things but as he has developed this ocd he has started praying in front of non living things sneezing whenever in contact with dust change of weather sneezing sudden start he remains sad doesn't talk with anyone stays quiet always physical journals normal appetite no specific craving aversion to methi thirst 2 liters a day chilly normal sweating on back sleep normal lying on left side mental journals don't have any problem 
don't like to talk so the thing is mother starts uh, mother told me that doctor chup chup rehna shuru kiya he has no stop talking to anyone so uh, no interest in watching tv or playing any games he was all right till april month he was mischievous so he said that he was brought to me in june so he said that he was having mild ocd but he has he was very mischievous so suddenly he has become very quiet after 10th result he has taken non medical and plus one he is in 10 plus 1 now so he has taken non medical till 10th he was quite cheerful in april now he has gone to the new school and now he has a new class and now he has stopped being mischievous and he is he is just silent all the time no social life only religious so he whatever he is he wakes up 2 am in the morning do the part all the time and he has become silent and then after that even uh, when he returns from the school he just start praying ping 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 study for long time he is either holding a book or gutka take a lot of time in washroom or he is either studying or doing part or is in washroom he has no communication with the family he is absent minded whenever you talk he hardly replies so he is head boy in the school he never talk to head boy he even doesn't make eye contact with the girls so earlier he was he was very cheerful guy but now he has stopped talking to the girls in his class he is good in studies he gives good response to teachers up to 10th standard he had lot of friends he had same friends and in same school till now so he has moved to just class till he is so i asked that whether there is a change in the school or is is he has been moved to a new environment he said no he has been studying into the same school all the girls are his friends since childhood they are together for 5 6 years so there is nothing but he has suddenly stopped talking to the girls and making eye contact with the girls so he has uh, the father said that maybe in 8th class he had some company and he has visited some wrong sites on internet like sexual cruelty firing he started watching wrong videos in 8th standard those thoughts keep disturbing me they are wrong thoughts especially of sexuality then he started praying because of these thing he he said that this is a sin so in the meantime his father grandfather became sick due to that he feels bad started crying he never visited hospital he used to take care of his grandfather he used to pray a lot for his wellness and now he has started blaming himself that because i watched those uh, porn things and wrong things which are against my religion and against my family values that's why god has punished my dada ji and he has become the sick he is reserved doesn't share his feeling now don't talk much he changed from extrovert to introvert is very angry before he was very angry before but now he is don't get anger anger he used to speak rudely even hits back he was mischievous used to poke his younger sister so he has strong fear for the dogs and hospital when his grandfather was admitted he refused to go to the uh, school and hobbies there are no specific hobbies stress about studies learn anything about anything due to his stress he can't sleep so he said that he has taken started taking a lot of uh, sleep so he cannot sleep innate characteristics thirsty controlled cry responsible reserved caring indifferent he has sexual religious conflict highly responsible indifferent so these are some of the traits which came so i took these two symptom religious alternating with sexual excitement and responsibility strong so uh, you can understand i'm not going into the detail lilium tig is a remedy which has this particular trait so in uh, materia medica it is written that conflict between sexuality and religious sexual excitement alternating with apprehension of religious ideas in the mental emotional sphere he will usually see evidence of contention of idealism with need to fulfill personal desire the female patient will often suffer from none poor complex she may be sexually indiscriminating 
feel unclean or her partner makes her unclean on the other hand she may entertain a very puritanical restraint which cuts her from a healthy relationship in men there is a tendency to idealize women or opposite this after all is how the non whore complex originate wood has written this non whore complex so they they uh, attach that sexuality to the sin and then they get that desire whenever they get that thoughts and desire they start praying and all uh, this is a vicious cycle obscene thoughts now in this case uh, <clears throat> even uh, i had another lady uh, these days i'm treating another lady who is responding very well to the lilium pig uh, she she again uh, had uh, she she said that i have developed ocd thrice in my lifetime once in my at my puberty other time there was some issue i got some abortions and then i got and now at the menopause so definitely her sexuality uh, hormones and ocd has a deep relationship now she said that i have grandchildren my grandson is about to be married very soon but for last few months i have started getting sexual thoughts so i punish myself i i'm feeling so guilty and so disgusting about myself that at this age when my grandchildren are about to marry i'm feeling like having sexual thoughts so they, i'm getting many patients these days i'm treating three or four ladies in menopause having not all the sexual obsessions but ocd so menopause is another time which triggers the ocd many times so that lady has again again she said that i get sexual threat i punish myself then i do the part so uh, lilium tig has a symptom that they must keep themselves busy to suppress their sexual thoughts so this is what uh, I, i was the basis of my prescription in this lady she said that i always keep myself busy from 4 am so earlier i used i stopped doing household work few days back my uh, daughter in law has taken over so now i have stopped maids because she is a very rich lady so i have started cleaning dusting my house myself because i want to keep myself busy for to prevent these thoughts so till i am busy uh, a bit better but when i sit so these thoughts these sexual thoughts they intrude my mind so lilium tick is affecting that lady but in Five this minutes, case, 5 minutes Doctor Mukundar, five minutes now left. Sure, 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 sure. Thank you. Thank so you. So follow-up updates say that on uh, after fifteen days he was better for few days and then problem restarted. He remains absent-minded. In July, speed slow, communicate now but not much improves. It's time more first time after returning to home goes to grandfather room and sit there. His grandfather had passed and sits there. so father visited and he again told that he he say he prays to avoid sexual thoughts to overpower his mind he has been indulged in masturbation which he has just confessed with his father so that's why he stopped doing a girl i contact with the girls so on 24th august means i started treatment in the mid of the june and after two and a half months he developed severe thrash skin fungal so he started having severe physical symptoms so the parents told that he has started losing weight and he is diagnosed of jaundice parents are in panic and asking to start allopathy for jaundice and fever they said that doctor the okay ocd symptom are better we know that he is improving after your medicine but this uh, has uh, become an all problem he has developed severe jaundice so if you see the reports i'm not going into the detail but you see that bilirubin has has gone to 2.52 and this so this was something very testing period for me on one side he is improving on ocd on other side he has developed that severe jaundice so what to do but family was with me for many years so i asked so in lesser writing there is a chapter in lesser writing that affects and i'll show you so a doctor can't write somewhere when an individual is sick in the will see so when he is turn to haters when he desire to destroy his own life he flees from hates his own children wife has ever suspend entire involuntary system is perverted in this sort of insanity what will occur 
direction of cure dr kent lesser writing when a correct prescription is made in psychiatric cases the heart or liver will become affected these correspond to the direction so disease moves from psyche to soma patient keep on improving without any repetition and is now perfect all right since last two years all the lockdown period he is all right so i just hold it on my prescription i prescribe nothing i just advise them to if you want to get your son to be get rid of this ocd you don't have to interrupt this jaundice so so these are something which is very i'll show you one more thing i'll, I'll give you a reading uh, so please uh, uh, just hold on So if you see Dr. Kent's lesser writing, uh, I'm just sharing the screen. Am I able, uh, are you able to see my screen? No, 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 no. Okay. It says activation field. No, no. Yes, yes. So if you go to the materia medica and Kent, if you understand, read the Kent. Kent's uh, lesser writing. There is a chapter. Mm -hmm. uh, So the effect of uh, different uh, systems, I'm just showing you that chapter. So different organs, how they get affected in the follow-ups. So he has very elaboratively written that when understanding diseases are there, so this patient or other patient of uh, Lilium Tick, she has suffered for, from the uh, asthma. And this patient is suffered from uh, this uh, jaundice. So doctor, uh, I'm just not able to make out. So I'll just mention it into the group. So this way you can see uh, how these things they affect. So by taking the follow-up into the consideration, you just, if it would have been interrupted for the jaundice, this case would have never been cured. So some contemplations are homeopathy is an art and science, use perception and artistic method in case taking, prescribing and follow-up science should be followed. Science of homeopathy is organ and of medicine. Don't go beyond the speculative science, modern science. Our science is organ. So we homeopaths are blessed with the science which can make a huge change. But we need to learn our science by forming study groups and following footstep of our masters. So I congratulate Ontario Homeopathic Medical Association for taking this initiative. These kind of groups are really help. So OCD is treatable disease and right homeopathic approach can solve most difficult of the cases. So with that, I wind up my presentation. Thank you, Dr. Sharma, Dr. Saroj, and whole of the Ontario Homeopathic Medical association thank you for giving me this opportunity to share so this is my contact information you can you are always most welcome for any doubts so on whatsapp you can contact me thank you thanks very much uh, dr magindar ji uh, for your great presentation uh, i will be taking a few questions uh, yes, as please. promised so can first one stop is... sharing your screen dr magindar please i'll stop sharing my screen okay thank you uh -huh. So the first question uh, is from Dr. Sanjeev Agarwal. Uh, can mental or physical abuses initiates OCD from childhood? Yes. How to, I have... This first part yes. and second part is how to control child abuse with homeopathy. 
Uh, this is for sure, I have mentioned it in one of the slides. Yes, sexual abuse, child abuse is a major cause of OCD triggering because OCD is triggered when you are extremely frightened or when you suppress and in the development of sexual phase, if there is a punishment, so these uh, children, uh, they start getting these kind of symptoms. Now, uh, how to stop child abuse is something which is a social issue with homeopathy. You can, if you treat the patient, if you prescribe the right remedy, the perspective of the patient changes and you have to counsel the family also because parents, they are not able to accept many times. And most of the time in females, you don't, they don't share that they are being assaulted. Many patients whom I have encountered in India, there was a girl who shifted to Canada uh, the parents send on a goodwill note, but the cousin brother was assaulting her or the chacha was assaulting her. So this is a bad thing into our society, but this is a bitter truth. So you need to understand this and uh, make the patient aware. You can treat the patient only when he approaches you, once you prescribe it. So this social awareness is another thing which you can do because by making the people aware, by making the creating a kind of awareness and making our teenagers or the children aware about good touch and bad touch and to raise their voices because in your countries it is again possible to complain about the parents but in india this is something which is again not possible till date so these are the social issues but still if you if the patient is in contact with you you can definitely help them age is a kind of very favorable uh, circumstances or very favorable environment for development of OCD and many psychiatric illnesses. How we can help is again the answer remains the same that by giving as Dr. Henneman has clearly mentioned that understanding the patient, giving the behavioral therapy, understanding the miasm of the patient, making a right prescription, because when you make a prescription, when you take a homeopathic case, you get a privilege to look into the right from the childhood, all the history is exposed to you. But you say your problem is a communication uh, gap because you cannot talk much to the patient. So that, that is an added problem. So here the role of observations comes because there are two types of symptoms in homeopathy. One are subjective and other are objective. So many a times, as I told you in one of the case, that the person was uh, responding very slow and very late. So taking that symptom into consideration, that answer reflects long. So that way, many, many of the body language symptoms, that whether the person is low in confidence or higher in confidence, his, uh, his communication skills, whether the person is extrovert or an introvert, on what side the person is getting more affected, right-sided or left-sided. He has more injuries on the right side or the left-sided. So all these clues, they can give a great insight into the patient without proper communication. I have been visiting uh, the countries like Malaysia and there where, there where there is hardly any communication language uh, similarities. But still, a homeopath can use his inner senses, interoceptives and this body language and this objective totality to crack the patients. I hope you got the answer. Yes, thank you. Um, and the next question was, in the case of the patient who was treated with Lilium Tig, did he had joined this in the past history? Uh, I could not locate it, but yes, after he had, the mother said that he always had a weak liver. 
they have been giving her liver tonics and all that because in the childhood doctor told that yes but uh, other than that infantile jaundice he had never had a severe jaundice but this was the severest jaundice after our medicine and did you give uh, medicine for the jaundice he asks no 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 i hold it i just advise the management and keep a close watch on the patient and it started recovering in uh, uh, May 10, 15 days. He was started. He showed the signs of recovering. I was keeping a close watch. I was getting the bilirubin again, LFT done, but his OTPT were in range and I saw some of the improvement. It was not an obstructive jaundice. So indirect was not raising because if in a jaundice case, if indirect is rising, indirect bilirubin, that is a warning sign. So you need to know the red flags. So it was not a red flag, it was just a jaundice, doctor diagnosed it and they wanted uh, it might flare up and all that. But I was sure with my prescription and the follow-up. So I uh, took a risk to take that case in my hand and I took a lead. Okay, I am responsible if something bad happens and that worked for me. Thank you. And this last question was, uh, how then you maintain such a high bilirubin, but to do when physical symptoms come up come up after mental symptoms, how to handle that? So I think you answered that, but if you still want to give some. See again that your confidence that patient is improving in will and understanding, patient's reasoning is improving, OCD symptoms are improving. See jaundice, even in allopathy, if you say, they hardly have any treatment. It is the management. Jaundice is to be managed until unless as I told you, it is an obstructive jaundice or something pathological jaundice. So if it is a, either it is viral hepatitis or infective hepatitis or something like that, drug-induced hepatitis. So you, you know that you are in command of the case. It's your experience and you see you always uh, sometimes take an extra risk into your practice. That's what I took. So thank you very much. Um... Uh, thanks again, Dr. Muktinder Singh Ji, for uh, uh, this part of part two of your wonderful presentation on OCD. Um, just a few thoughts that there are a number of famous uh, people and celebrities with OCD who struggle with obsessive compulsive disorder like uh, David Beckham, the world uh, renowned soccer player, and Howie Mandel, uh, a comedian, uh, game show host, and judge on the America's Got Talent, uh, has a his long history of OCD. In fact, I had an occasion to meet, you know, uh, meet uh, Mr. Mondal in person and spoke with him about his ailment. And if there is any time, I will show my photograph. Um, but uh, I would also now uh, like to thank participants uh, of this webinar, including our guests from all over the world and Canada. Um, and now I request. Uh,